guys, welcome back to a brand new episode of r and Garage. I want to welcome all my new subscribers. Thank you guys so much for subscribing, liking, commenting, and sharing my videos. And of course, everybody who's been there since the beginning and joined along the way, thank you so much for continuing on this car journey with me. Okay, so before we get started on the hatching today, there's a special person I have to thank, and that is 614 underscore Yoda. He is, oh my gosh, he's so cool, man. He sent me this deliciously soft, Toyota hoodie. I absolutely love. It's like 47 degrees here today. Yes, in California, it does get down to about 47 degrees. And it's raining, as you can see, by the outside of the hatchie. But anyway, back to the sweatshirt. How sick is this? I absolutely love this. Yay. And he also, this is so funny, I'm not going to take off the hoodie because I'm like freezing right now. But I also have his long sleeve shirt underneath as well. Same design, same sick ass Toyota on the arm. So... Thank you. If you're interested in getting a hoodie or another item of clothing from him, look him up on Instagram at 614 underscore Yoda and he'll hook you up. Yay! Okay, so on to the hatchie. Today is all about prepping it for the K24 swap. And that's all I'm going to say. Let's get it done. Okay guys, so like I said, we're going to start to prep the hatch for the K24 swap. Now, we've definitely started to order parts, except... I think it's going to be kind of the same thing with Blueberry, where it's like, in stock, we'll ship in four months. Now, race season starts in March, which literally is like tomorrow. So we do have a couple contingency backup plans, which I'm going to talk about in a second. But anyway, um, that's about what's going on right now. Okay, so while we're waiting for all the parts, we're most definitely not going to pull the motor out just yet. So it's still, you know, going to be drivable. But again, we are going to pull certain parts off it to get ready. Does that make sense? I hope so. Okay, so Hasport Performance. We love you guys. You know how I feel about you guys. They make a fantastic, um, basically, bracket for their mounts right down here. The problem is, um, well, I don't want to say it's a problem. Well, it's a problem for California folks. Unfortunately, with smog laws the way they are, I'm going to have to pull out the case swap every couple of years, throw the B-Series back in, and get it smogged. And unfortunately, once you drill out the holes for the case swap mount, you can't really put the B-Series mount back on. Um, it's almost impossible. So if you guys, Hasport Performance, could come up with a bracket that even if you've drilled all the holes for the case swap and it's now complete, if you made up a B-Series bracket that would have maybe the same holes, it would be able to bolt on top of the holes you already drilled, that would be freaking awesome. So putting a bug in your ear. And I will definitely be like, you know, the first person to try this out if you want. Just, you know, <laughs> just saying. Okay, I think that's it for that. Let's move on. Let's take out some parts. Okay, guys. So as all my actor friends know, well, they know they can count on me for one thing when it's really, really cold and we're on set. Hand warmers! So anyway, you mechanic guys, you would probably love these too. No, ha Hot Hands is not paying me to like mention any of these, but I'm just saying these are lifesavers. Otherwise, my hands would be cold and dead right about now. Okay, so the name of the game today is Ignition System Tune-Up. We recently took her to Radwood. She made it awesome all the way to LA. It was about maybe six and a half hour, seven hour trip, I-5, you know, nothing but like flat driving. Unfortunately, on the way back, she started having some issues. Um, she was getting a little, like, rearing up. You know, you could feel it. We were like, oh, crap. We pulled off in Emeryville, which is known for their Ikea. <laughs> That's about it. And, uh, yeah. And so we had to do a bunch of different things to get her running. We were afraid we were going to have to load her up on a flatbed. Luckily, we got her home. But we are going to pull off the, di the distributor today, show you guys what's inside and what we're planning on doing. Okay guys, so now I'm gonna pull off the distributor. So, or at least the cap at first. I'm gonna let the wires just kind of hang off of it. I'm not gonna remove those. And again, remember these screws are pretty much held in by the cap, so they're not gonna come out all the way. And there are three screws. There's one, two, and one in the bottom that's kind of hard to show you. So let's go ahead and rip this off. And 
and uh, 614 Yoda. I'm sorry in advance if I get grease on your hoodie, but thank goodness it's gray. <laughs> okay, here we go. I'm going to put this up here, and it should, yep, pull straight off like that. Check that out. I'm going to tuck it just a little bit like that, and now we can see the actual distributor. Okay, I love it when I have to climb into my engine bay because also it's nice and warm and I'm like a kitty cat right now looking for heat. Okay, <laughs> so hi Kyle. <laughs> anyway, so now we got to uh, take care of these connectors. Basically, there's two that have to come off and then separate. And this one, this top one can be a bear. I know, at least I, when I'm dealing with connectors, I always have a tendency to push up rather than down. But this one, you have to push down to take off the switch right here. It's just super weird. And now we're gonna go ahead and press actually down on this one to separate. And if I can't get it separated, because this one's a bit of a bear, I'm gonna to have to do it probably, uh, I don't wanna break it, crap. I'll have to do it with a screwdriver. Yeah, I'm not gonna do it right now because I don't wanna pull out these wires. But there's also another connector here that we're gonna go ahead and separate as well. So this one's a little bit easier. Perfect. Let's see if I can... Ah! Yeah, no. <laughs> okay, I'll deal with that off screen. <laughs> Moving on. Okay, you guys know I hate doing anything off, off camera now. So I'm going to show you what to do. When a connector is being a bit of a bear, misbehaving, what you're going to do is try to wrestle it apart just enough you can get a screwdriver in here. And then we're going to go ahead again, press down. Oops and give it a twist and it should hopefully without stabbing myself should come apart yes and this isn't blood it's my lipstick so. okay so great on the connectors <laughs> okay so if i were a spider would i also want to nest in the distributor cow heck yeah it's warm in there <laughs> still a little like ew get out of my distributor but you know it is what it is <laughs> Okay guys, first a handy dandy little time saver for you guys. Before we pull off the distributor, it's always a good idea to make a couple of marks. One right here, you can already see we did it last time with red pen. This is so we know where the distributor lined up exactly. And so this is gonna save a lot of grief. And then you're gonna come down here with the blade and you're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna start from the middle and go up. And so it's like right here, bam. Okay, now we're ready to pull it off. Okay, now it's time to take off the three 12 millimeter bolts. I've got one foot in the engine bay, which is that like one foot out the door? No? Okay, just being in a silly mood today. I had way too much Starbucks. Okay, so for the top one here, you can see obviously you aren't gonna get at it with the ratchet. And so you're gonna use the box end of the wrench. Go ahead and break it. And I just tightened it. <laughs> there we go. And once you break it, you can probably just use your, oh yeah, it loosened it really really well and so we're gonna take this guy off and it is a bit of a longish bolt you might say okay. and the washer kind of gets in the way a little bit come on oh yes it hit the floor <laughs> okay let's get these other two so there's one right here on the side, which is going to be kind of hard to see. And then there's one all the way down here. So let's go ahead and, and get these two. And actually, go ahead and I usually cut these out so they don't get stuck on anything. Okay, so you have to pull the connectors out of the way. There we go. And it's kind of at a weird angle. like leaning oh I caught it it almost fell too I don't know if I would have been as lucky the second time okay now I'm gonna go for the bottom one like I said this one's a little bit hard to see oh I got it right on the first try love that you 
got literally like three heaters running in here right now. I know all you folks that live in like Montana or whatever, where it gets down to maybe about 12 degrees are laughing at me right now. 47 is probably like a warm summer day. <laughs> Not so for me. Thin California blood. Okay. Stay. So this should be loose enough for me to get off. Got a weird angle. There we go. You can see the distributors already ready to come loose. I think I'm going to have to oh, get that leg out. Just not fun. Holy moly, I'm gonna have to. Okay, almost ready. There we go. And obviously, hold the distributor up with your other hand because once the bolt's out, you can fall. There we go. See, this is why I don't like speeding up videos sometimes because you can never really tell how long a bolt whoop, is gonna take sometimes, but oh, glad I wore my gloves. Okay, <laughs> it is out, let's move on. And it's warm, it's so warm. <laughs> okay guys, now that the distributor has been pulled, now is the time to give it a good cleaning with a degreaser, like zap. So we already did this. You can see it's basically shiny and clean. Yay. Okay, now we're gonna take off the rotor. So to do this, the screw is right in the middle. You're gonna have to rotate the rotor a little bit to get at it. And again, this is not the part where you're gonna cheap out on your screwdriver because even one a little bit too big or a little bit too small, you're going to mess up that screw either by, you know, stripping it or something else. So anyway, just trust me when I say this, we love our Weehaw screwdrivers. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and take this off. And again, be very, very careful. I like to hold the rotor. There we go. Okay, now we can get it out a little bit faster. And let's just dump this out. It won't come out. There we go. And now you just pull straight and it should just, bam, there you go. Hi, rotor. Okay, moving on. Okay, so with the rotor off, this little plastic cap just pulls right off. So actually, first you kind of inspect that, see if there's any like liquid or any stains, and actually it looks pretty damn good. So we're gonna set that aside. Now we're gonna concentrate on the ignition and the coil. Chances are, if the electronics are bad in any other area, you're just gonna wanna replace the whole distributor. So, like I said, this is what we're gonna look at next. Okay, to take out the coil, there are four screws you're gonna need to take off. And again, be very, very careful because these are even more delicate than the ones on the rotor. So, or the one on the rotor. So, it's this, uh, point like this. One, two, a three, and a four. And once we get these two off, you should be able to lift off the wires. I'm just gonna concentrate so I don't hmm, strip this one out. Okay, good. This always makes me nervous, especially now that you know it's like impossible to get parts, like even nuts and screws and all that kind of stuff, bolts. D had to order some for work, and it was literally. Um, a battle to get them. And that's like a little tiny guy right there. You can see that. So now we're going to take out this one. And again, it, it'd be a lot easier if it wasn't on like such an angle. Hmm. Come on, buddy. There we go. Whew. Until I see the whole screw turn, it always makes me wonder in the back of my mind, are you stripping it? Okay. So this, like you can see, both of these lift out just like that. And so I'm gonna kind of bend them over to the side and now I'm gonna take out these two screws. Perfect. Okay. So that one's a little bit loose. I'm gonna start this one at the same time. There we go. Beautiful. So, oops. 
Oh, you guys, it feels so good to be working on cards again. It's been a long few months. It feels like months anyway. Okay. There we go. Okay, the screws are out. So this lifts just out like that. Coil. <laughs> Okay, so just as I suspected, and this happens with a lot of Integra, actually all B-series motors, if you see a little bit of a mark right here on the coil, it's because voltage is leaking out a little bit and it's trying to find basically the wall, you know, so that like the current surges and it's trying to find the fastest way out. And so rather by using the coil itself, it's using the plastic piece to kind of be like, woohoo, let's, let's connect here. So... That's something to watch out for. You probably can't see it on camera, but it is just a little tiny burnt mark right there. Okay, now we're gonna take out the ignition module. So this consists of three screws, the one on top and these two right here. And again, you're going to have to use the ratchet for these bottom two, and we can just use a regular screwdriver for this one. So I'm gonna go ahead and take off the top one first. Yes. I always worry how tight they're going to be. It looks like someone has been in this distributor before, maybe like many, many moons ago. So it makes me a little bit worried, but I mean, she's been running since then, so I'm not totally mad, bro. Okay, so there's one. Let's go ahead and use our ratchet. And again, just be very, very careful. And you're going to want to press in. just literally tightened it after I loosened it. Okay. There's one, and ooh, looks a little rusty there, doesn't it? Okay. And you can see it's already wiggling, so. Wow, that rain is really coming down now. They like said we could get up to like five or six inches, so I'm super pumped about that. Okay, so now I'm pretty sure this lifts out, but I'm going to check it out further. <laughs> okay, so to actually get um, the ignition module out, what you have to do is take this wire out of its little bracket there and then push, or basically, yeah, and do it like that. And we're gonna push it under so it's out of the way. We're gonna take this one off as well. Where's this? Hmm. There we go, that one's off. This bracket's off. Just about. I feel like this should come off too. Oh, there we go, no need. Okay, so yeah, actually, well, I'll pull it off later, but you can see it's out. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead, pull this off the rest of the way. There we go. Okay, guys, whatever you do, do not throw these away. Um, these are getting super rare now, the B-series, and you may not think you need it, but it, it, just keep it. Do me a favor, just keep it. It's tiny. And again, if this does end up being broken... Don't throw away the whole part. This heat shield comes off. And these, this is also super hard to find out too, even in pick and pulls. So again, keep these two parts together. Okay, moving on. Okay, so you see we have a lovely little display of boxes right here with the ignition module. We have the rotor right here. We have the cap and we have the co coil. What happened? Dion, did you use the coil on the on Blueberry? He's shaking his head no, because clearly it was me. <laughs> yes, we did indeed use the coil on Blueberry and forgot to order a new one. So that is now on the way. <laughs> yeah, you know, it happens. We have way too many um, S-boxes. <laughs> Moving on. Okay, so before we throw all these parts in, there are some good methods to kind of check out to make sure that the rest of the distributor is working just fine.
So looking at these things right here, they always look a little droopy and the wiring is like hella old. So you just want to make sure it's not cracked. It's not just like hanging on by a thread to the booty itself, that it's actually still workable. And so I'm just going to check each one. I checked them before, but I'm checking it for you guys now too. These all look really, really good. Um, we want to obviously check the connectors, make sure none of the plastics are broken. Those still look really, really good. Uh, the wiring, obviously, it's all still connected, not cracked. That looks fantastic. Okay, this you kind of want to push down and turn, and it's probably a good idea to lift it up when you're doing that. So just to make sure, yeah, nice. Yeah, that feels good. And again, check the bottom, make sure there's no oil. I mean, we wiped everything out and so we knew there wasn't any oil to begin with, but um, it's always a good idea to go back again after you clean it and just make sure it's it looks shiny, shiny, brand new. Okay, now we can move on. So as a rule, good heavy duty distributor caps will come with a gasket, a brand new gasket. Um, now, normally we like to use OEM parts, Unfortunately, again, with the B series, they're almost impossible to get. And so this is aftermarket, but again, buy one that comes with a gasket. And so since it does, I'm gonna go ahead and take off the old one. And so you can do this with a pick and start in kind of an easy to start place like this. You can see it looped right through. And, oh yeah, it's like a little piece of spaghetti. Bam, old gasket. Oh, sorry, I completely forgot. There's also an O-ring um, gasket of sorts on the bottom end too. I'm not gonna take it off right now, but it's also a good idea when you're changing the top gasket to change out this guy as well. Okay, now we're good. <laughs> okay guys, well, I feel like this video is getting a little bit long and also I'm worried that it's starting to flood out there. So we're gonna cut it off right now. Um, and we'll come back obviously with the part two, considering we don't have, we don't have the ignition coil to put in right now you know, why bother putting it together? So from all of us here at R&D Garage, remember to hit that subscribe button and notification so you know exactly when we post a new video. Thank you guys so much for liking, commenting, and sharing my videos. And I will be back to work very, very soon. Take care, you guys.